The Class 2 Message Monitor, a feature available on the Tech 2 and also the Master Tech, basically tells which module's active and which module is inactive. Now, did you know that that's actually a neat trick in diagnosing some stubborn, hard to find parasitic battery drains? That is, that little bit of current that draws the battery down over the course of a few hours or even a few days. Let's go into a segment on battery drain testing and then we'll come back and talk more about the Tech 2 and multiplexing and Fred takes the bus. Well, all the good and clean and tight connections in the world won't help you if something keeps running the battery down. Now that's something sometimes is called a short or if it's a very small draw, a parasitic draw. Now, parasitic drains can be measured with ammeters in series with the battery cable. Now, the problem with taking the battery cable off to install the ammeter is that sometimes electronic modules are the source of the parasitic draw. Now, all modules draw a little bit for their keep alive memory, between 1 and 5 milliamps. And if you add them all up, at the, at the most, 20 milliamps on average, as low as 10 and as high as 40 milliamps. Now, if you hook your ammeter in series and you see 100 milliamps or 200 milliamps, that's too much parasitic draw. And the battery, you can calculate by amp hours on the battery's rating, the battery can run down in, in the course of overnight or even a few days or a couple of weeks. So what we want to do is see how much parasitic current draw this vehicle is drawing. Now, we have to open the circuit to install the ammeter or something we're going to use called a parasitic draw tool. So I'm going to loosen the battery cable and pull it off. And I can do one of two things. I can install the ammeter in series with the cable, or I could connect, better yet, a parasitic draw tool. Now, this is how this works. It works basically in the principle of an RV knife switch. You know, recreational vehicles typically are not driven or towed very often and their batteries will sit in storage for long periods of time. Now batteries will discharge all by themselves simply because they're batteries. In fact, the hotter the weather, the faster the self discharge. That's bad enough, but if you have something that's got some parasitic current draw, let's say 50 or 100 milliamps, on something driven as rarely as an RV, you're liable to have a dead battery every time you want to go camping. So a lot of owners will install, like on this version for the side terminal batteries, they'll install this knife switch. And when they park their camper or their boat or trailer for a few weeks, they'll open the switch up and now whatever's out there in the circuit won't draw the battery down. Now you can actually use one of these as a parasitic draw test tool. Simply screw this bolt into the side terminal post of the battery and then this other one is going to go on the actual battery cable. What you'll do is you'll connect your ammeter between this contact and this contact. And when the switch is closed, you can actually operate the vehicle, turn the key on, start the motor, get those electronic ignition modules and PCMs and BCMs and all these modules that could accidentally, because they're intermittently defective, run the battery down. You can get them all working normally again and hopefully catch them in the act. Now when you open the switch, if the ammeter is connected between here and here, when you open the switch, you don't actually open the circuit. The battery does not lose connection with the car. You simply gave it an alternate path. Instead of the current flowing between here and here, the current now flows between here and through the ammeter and back here. So we never open the circuit. We just change the path of the circuit. This is more likely uh, going to be a great aid in catching those intermittent parasitic drains. Now they make a special tool that's actually for this job. A little more expensive. You can buy them from the tool truck. There's a version actually that adapts to this. Connections adapt to this for the side terminal battery. Uh, this one for top post is actually pretty simple. What you do is you put the battery cable onto the tool. And you're going to operate the vehicle, so go ahead and tighten the cable. There. Now let's tighten the tool 
onto the battery post. Now, I can actually leave this tool in place and even turn the customer loose if you know them and you think they'll bring your tool back and give them time enough to drive the vehicle and hopefully the intermittent battery drain will appear. Now, when you want to use your ammeter, you won't have to interrupt the battery circuit. You'll simply give it an alternate path. Connect the ammeter, make sure you have it turned to amps, and make sure you have it on the right setting of the scale. I've got it on the highest setting. On this meter, it's auto-ranging, but I have two holes, one for 10 amps. There's also another socket for 400 milliamps. On this particular meter, both the 400 milliamps and the 10 amp are fused. Now, on some meters, the 10 amp or the higher amperage range is not fused. That means if you were to have it connected like we have it and have your ammeter in series with the battery cable and then inadvertently hit the starter motor to start the engine, you would try to make this poor little meter with only a 10 amp capability unfused source 200 amps of starter draw. Of course, the meter will become a very expensive fuse in the process, ruining your meter. So to prevent that, you might consider taking an inline fuse holder and splicing it in series with your leads to your multimeter. What we want to do is connect our ammeter from this point of the parasitic draw switch to this point back here. Now, when I open this switch up, simply by turning the knob counterclockwise, I open the circuit up into the meter. Let's turn the meter on first. We have it on the 10 amp scale. Now right now it's showing 00.00, .00 amps because I have the current flowing through the switch with the switch closed. Turn the knob counterclockwise, it'll open the switch, but now the current will be redirected through my ammeter and I should see a reading if I have a parasitic current draw. And the meter reads the same, 0.00, .00 giving me the impression that I have absolutely no parasitic current draw. Now, this is where a lot of technicians go wrong. They think they're clean, they have no parasitic current draw, but in reality, they've simply blown the fuse in their meter. The meter's reading zero because it's not flowing any current through its ammeter because the fuse to protect the meter is blown. So they think they have no parasitic current draw. One way to determine that is you will have some parasitic current draw. You should see at least five milliamps on any late model vehicle, probably more close to 15 or 20. But if you see 0.00, .00 that's a sure sign you've got a bad fuse. Now bad fuses and ammeters that are using to measure current draw go hand in hand. It's a very common problem around the shop. In fact, when we made this video, both the meters that we went to use to do the program had blown fuses in them. That's an age-old problem. We have a solution, an alternative to use to try and catch intermittent parasitic current draw, and all you need is a few simple, inexpensive components and your good old voltmeter, which seems to be a little bit more foolproof because it doesn't need fuses.